And now back to the market. At least one analyst saying that oil could rise to get this $120 a barrel. Joining us now, John Hoffmeister, former Shell Oil president. John, do you think that's possible uh, uh, that we could ever get back over 100 bucks? Oh, yes, absolutely possible. And it wouldn't surprise me in the least, maybe not this year, but in the 19, uh, 2019, 2020 time frame, I think for sure. Uh, remember, we've cut out about $500 billion in investment in this industry since 2014 to 2018. And oil only declines once you're producing it. And so we're already at a tight supply level, and it could get tighter yet if global demand keeps growing the way it has been. So I, I think we'd better watch out for the high end, over $100 a barrel, because I think it's almost inevitable at this stage. Wow. You know, it's interesting because uh, more recently, every time oil is cracked through 70, you get to 73, <laughs> 74, and then you blink, and it's back in the mid-60s again. It feels like, uh, you know, there's a cycle that happens, and when it gets to a certain level, they turn the spigots back on, and America is the rigs, and other places perhaps, they, you know, more output. So you're saying we're going to have a point where that won't even match demand anymore. That's right. I, I think we're very close in supply-demand relationship, probably within a few hundred thousand barrels a day between demand and supply. But that's only going to increase in terms of, of, of greater demand than supply. And then I think we'll see a structural increase in the oil price, which unfortunately would probably last for a number of years until the capital spending catches up with the, the, the new oil developments which will somehow satiate the market. Wow, that's amazing. So $100, I kind of written that off, but uh, I am in some oil stocks. I'm kinda, <laughs> so it's a mix, uh, mix of prediction there. I do want to ask you about this one, John, the, uh, the president's framework for a trade deal. <laughs> it includes Europe buying our liquefied natural gas. Obviously, we know that's a direct shot at that Russian pipeline, but last year our LNG exports were up 400 percent. I think people don't realize how big, how huge this could be economically for our country. And it's only going to get bigger with time. I think time is of the essence here. This is not going to be an overnight shift of LNG to the European market because we don't have the supply chain yet in the U.S. We have been building LNG manufacturing capability, but it takes years to put those plants in effect, and it takes years to build the ships that carry the LNG from this side of the Atlantic to the other side of the Atlantic. And in the meantime, European demand is being met by European supply for the most part. So, but I don't have any hesitation to say that the trade growth between the U.S. and Europe will, over the next five and ten years, become a major part of the relationship between the two uh, the two continents. Right. And, and I think we can look forward to that. But at the same time, I think we also have to keep in mind that our natural gas could also become a domestic transportation fuel, and that could also be very good for the U.S. economy. Yeah, well, we've been hearing about that since uh, T. Boone Pickens pushed uh, that issue hard. John, thank you very much. Always uh, enlighten us with all, all of this uh, great information. We appreciate it. Thank hey, you.